Listen online at WCTCAM.com. Here's the old one. Jersey moves fast. Join the show that keeps you one step ahead. Jersey Central with Burt Barron on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. It is 737 back on Jersey Central on the new Talk Radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Just joining us. Where you been? 67 and cloudy. Mid-80s today. Traffic and weather update 745. Uh, also going to share with you some comments with Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin that he made regarding Governor Murphy and the ongoing budget negotiation and the uh, budget things that are kind of moving through in Trenton. Uh, as you know, the Assembly Speaker with his own monthly program here on WCTC. Hmm, he's serious about getting this taken care of. And uh, we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Well, of all the cars and trucks that are all over the roads of Jersey today, which of these cars would you describe as being the most American vehicle that is on the road? Let's find out what is the most American vehicle that is out there. My guest is from Cars.com. He's the executive editor, and he's got the list here of the most American cars. Uh, Joe Weisenfelder is with us here on WCTC. Joe, good morning. It's Burt Barron. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Joe, the, the thinking used to be that, well, unless a car has uh, a blue oval or a bow tie on it, I don't want anything to do with it because anything else is not American parts, American labor, uh, made in America. There's been obviously changes in, in the, the automotive uh, industry over so many years here. But uh, is it a kind of a surprise to people when they hear what is the most American vehicle that is on the road nowadays? Well, this is exactly why we created the American Made Index 12 years ago, because even back then, when things were a little bit clearer than they are now, uh, just looking at the brand doesn't tell you the whole story. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that uh, a lot of import, what we might consider import brands or used to consider import brands, bring their vehicles in from outside our borders. But the reality is that uh, a lot of American brands also uh, build vehicles outside of the U.S. and bring them in. So it's not as simple as just looking at the brand. And that's why when you look at the American Made Index this year, as has been the case for 12 years, you're going to see a mix uh, of different brands. This this time around, our top, top 10 is Jeep, Honda, Ford, Chevrolet, uh, Acura. So there's a mix, and they aren't necessarily the obvious suspects when you think of what is an American uh, vehicle. No, you're right. And you mentioned Honda in there. And I don't know if, if, if people really realize it, Joe, but when you look at these, these sort of these quote-unquote import cars, uh, a lot of these uh, places like Tennessee and Kentucky, and there's a lot of areas and a lot of jobs are created here in the United States by these so-called foreign brands that are uh, assembling cars uh, right here in the United States that we used to think were made overseas. But there's a, a big effort and a lot of jobs and a, a lot of importance to our economy with the work that's being done right here in the United States. Uh, that's correct, and that's what we look at. I mean, we look at uh, a, a number of factors that represent a, uh, an economic contribution to the U.S. Uh, so you mentioned Honda. Um, I'll give you an example. Number two and three in our, our uh, top ten this year are the Honda Odyssey and Ridgeline built in Lincoln, Alabama. Wow. Uh, and they have 75% domestic parts content. Uh, so just to juxtapose that, to make the point, uh, you know, we know there are American manufacturers that have some vehicles built in Canada and Mexico. And to take it to the farthest extreme, there's a Buick sold in the U.S. Uh, called the Envision. It's an SUV and a good one. Uh, it's built in China with 2% domestic parts, North American parts. So it just helps illustrate that uh, if you're looking for economic impact, um, where the vehicle is assembled and the parts and the labor and all the things that we look at uh, in our formula to determine the American-made index are, uh, are easily as important as the brand uh, that it comes from, and, and arguably more important. That's very interesting, uh, that small percentage there, that Buick. And I, I guess there's people, Joe, that are very passionate and very involved in this. I mean, nowadays, when it comes to buying a car, it seems like the consumers are so much more educated and they're so savvy, and they'll go to a dealership armed with all this information and this data and pricing ranges and all this other stuff. You used to have to go and sit down and talk to a salesperson to find out uh, more about the vehicles. But I think the American car shopper is just so much more savvy nowadays. Uh, are they becoming even more brand loyal nowadays too, Joe, uh, where someone will, will actually seek out and will make a point to purchase what they feel is the most American-made car? Well, it really depends. I mean, people buy different brands for different reasons. Maybe they're 
brand loyal because of their family or maybe a, a, a particular brand never let them down. And conversely, maybe they had a bad experience and they say, well, I'll never buy that brand again. Um, but ultimately, people have a pretty good idea of – consumers have a pretty good idea of what they want to buy. And then they go look for reasons to – uh, convince them or maybe dissuade them, and they look at EPA mileage and crash tests and the opinions of uh, humble reviewers like myself. Mm-hmm. And we look at the American Made Index as just another thing that uh, a shopper can look at and say, oh, you know, that's one more check in the plus column for this particular model, uh, that it is highlighted as one of the most American-made vehicles. Where does the data come from, Joe? Does it come from the actual manufacturers? The data, uh, we use a number of things. Primarily, uh, the main uh, requirement is the vehicle has to be assembled in the United States, so that's just a, a, a prerequisite. Likewise, we use domestic parts content from the American Automobile Labeling Act. That's where you look at the window sticker and it says percentage of North American parts or percentage of U.S. and Canadian parts. Uh, and we also... Uh, consider the country of origin for the engine and transmission, which are big, expensive, labor-intensive parts of the vehicle, and we have uh, a labor component as well. So we look at the uh, uh, factory workforce aspect, and all of these things are put together into our formula, and we come up with the ranking of the the top ten. Your observations, Joe, in in compiling this list on an annual basis, do you have certain uh, manufacturers that are are on the list one year and then vanish next year? Uh, Is it that kind of a a severe thing where – they're in the top ten one year and then gone from it the next? Things do change from year to year. And, and typically the biggest changes come when a vehicle is redesigned. Now, for example, uh, there's a Jeep at the top this, uh, this year, the Jeep Cherokee. Mm-hmm. I happen to be talking to you from the Belvedere, Illinois plant where it's assembled. Nice. Last year, number one was the Jeep Wrangler, uh, but the Wrangler was redesigned. And what we've seen over the years is typically uh, vehicles have – become a little bit more global. I mean, you see the domestic parts content gradually fall. It's a trend. Uh, and as a result, when vehicles are redesigned, sometimes that is the, the, the most, you know, the, the clearest opportunity for them to have a big change that will change the list. But bear in mind that the entire list is it's the field changes every year. So all of these data points are in flux. Uh, a vehicle that has exactly the same data this year as it had last year might not appear or might appear in a different place because the competition has all changed. Wow. Now, you've been reviewing and reporting on this uh, for almost 30 years now, Uh, Joe. uh, What what kind of car is is the good one this year? What's like a 2018 or or 2019 model that's got you excited? That's got me excited? Yeah. Oh, boy, that's such a tough question. Um, Well, I'll I'll do the obvious thing and tell you what our uh, our best of – uh, our best of 2018 award winner was, which yeah. was a Volkswagen Atlas uh, three-row SUV, which was also built in the U.S., just uh, coincidentally. Uh, great family vehicle. It gives you a lot of features, a lot of space uh, for the price. It won our top award for uh, 2018, and we purchased one and are testing it for a year uh, and are reporting on the ownership experience as well at Cars.com. Nice. Dodge Viper, should I waste my time or should I go for a Dodge Viper? What do you think? Uh, oh, yeah, you always got to go for the Viper first. <laughs> right, right. And, and then, like, you know, the Atlas and the minivan are your second car. Exactly. Of course they are. Of course they are. Joe, where can people go to check this list out or get some more information? Uh, all the details are at cars.com slash AMI for American Made Index. All right. Good stuff. Joe Weisenfelter, cars.com. Thanks for the time this morning. Safe driving. We'll talk to you soon, sir. Okay. Thank you much. All right. Thank you. All right. Jersey Central traffic and weather time, 7.